title of the story is called Finding Kui. <clears throat> Would you travel five hours to eat a Peruvian delicacy? It had always been a dream of my dad's to go to Peru. And in the summer of 2015, his dream came true when my brother, him, and I went off to Peru. Luckily for us, we had a neighbor who had spent the previous spring living in Peru, Cusco to be precise. So we had an upper hand on what we should do when we go to Peru. At the top of my dad's list was to obviously go to Machu Picchu, the grand uh, World Heritage Site that everyone knows Peru to be. Um, so she told us to, of course, go to Machu Picchu and go to the city of Cusco. But she also told us, told us to eat cuy, a food so desirable in Peru that it had its own national holiday. <laughs> we sound, we were intrigued, and so we told her we'd try to eat some cuy. So on the second day of being in Cusco, we wake up, we leave our hotel, and instead of taking a taxi service to this small village our neighbor told us to go get the Kui at, we decided to take the city bus. You're probably wondering why she told us to go to this particular village, and it's because, according to her, the Kui in Cusco was too touristy, and if you wanted the authentic Kui, you'd have to go to the faraway places, the places where the gringos don't go. <clears throat> so, uh, we get out of the hotel, and we walk to this bus station, and before I get too far, I need to tell you guys that I don't speak Spanish. My dad took Spanish in college, and my brother learned some at Conbell. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time we get to this uh, bus station, which is in the working, uh, working class part of town, we're the only white people, and to be honest, I don't think the Peruvian scared any bit about us. So we spent one hour trying to find out which bus to take. Is this going to this village? We kept asking people, or I should say, my brother in his broken Spanish, until eventually a young lady uh, told us, uh, get on this bus uh, and go until you get to the village. So we followed her ideas. Uh, little did we know, and we kind of forgot, it was a city bus, so instead of going from that bus station right to that small village, it stopped at every single block within Cusco, and mind you the fact it was morning, so there was rush hour traffic, so it wasn't until about two hours later that we were actually on the highway going to the village. Um, it was at this point where there was probably five other people on the bus, so the three of us, me, my brother, and my dad, four others, and this one young lady who looks at us, she says in Spanish to my brother, where are you going? We're still on a bus for this long. <laughs> so my brother tells her, we're going to this village. We're going to eat kui. She's like, ah, okay. And I, mean, I don't know how my brother got that across to her. Uh, somehow he did. She spoke very little English, but uh, one very important part of the story, and something I'll never forget, is after talking with her for a little bit, we finally get off the, she finally tells us, this is the stop. This is where you get off the bus. <clears throat> And after hearing us talk in English, and obviously struggling to talk to my brother, who probably had the Spanish level of a five-year-old, <laughs> she looks at us as we get off the bus and she asks us, are you guys from Argentina? <laughs> because apparently they speak English in Argentina. <laughs> so we get off the bus, and it's this village with one avenue down the middle, three streets, so a total of six, but three. Uh, we're like, oh, this will be easy. The restaurant will take 10 minutes to find. <clears throat> Except they didn't really have signs on the buildings, so we kind of went around the village poking our head around saying, Kui? Kui? Uh, it probably took us 45 minutes to an hour to finally find the restaurant. At this point, we're confused, we're tired, and most importantly, we're starving for our Kui. Uh, so we make it into the restaurant, we order our kui, and we're sitting at the table. I think my brother and I played a game for a little bit. It's 20 minutes after we order the kui, another 40 minutes. We get to an hour and a half, starving, really disappointed, until finally the kui comes out. Uh, the chef comes up with three plates, 
And I don't think we were prepared for what we were about to witness. Uh, he lays down the plates. And on the plates, this qui is a fully intact, full-sized, fried guinea pig. <laughs> you name it, it had it. And it still had its feet, it still had its ears, it still had its claws, it had the eye sockets, not the eyes. <clears throat> but we're not going to let this stop us. We came all this way for Wait, we're not, not going to turn around at this point. So, we get our fork, we get our knife, we look at each other, we go into it. Uh, the fork, I mean the knife, it didn't really have a, an edge to it, so we spent the better part of one to three minutes just trying to cut the skin. Uh, just cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it. Until we finally managed to get our little sliver of kui. And we all look at each other. Um, I think the first word to describe Kui would be leather. <laughs> it was literally leather. Um, to, to give it a taste. In my opinion, I don't know about my dad and my brother, I'd say it was tasteless. Um, and if you've ever chewed on a steak for a really long time, and you're like, when am I going to finally swallow this? Take that amount of time and multiply it by two, and that's how long it took us to finally swallow that bit of queen. Um, so to sum it up, one bite and that was it. We had that one bite, it took us that five hours, and we called it. We're, like, We're going back to Cusco. <laughs> Now you're probably wondering why I'm telling you this story. And it's because life isn't always about the destination, it's about the journey along the way. Thank you.